Hello and welcome to The Outcast. I'm your host, HC, and with me is... Wolf. And it's finally time to do Troll Hunters, considering this show is about as old as this podcast is. We the show took our time. Nah, we're fine. We're right on schedule. Uh, so that maybe, because our plan is to kind of get this all done before the movie comes out, which is soon, but... I think we got it. I We're think not we supposed think... to date things. Come on, HC professionalism. We're gonna talk about the fact that there's a movie at some point, so it's gonna date it anyway. And also, I said that the show is just as old as the podcast, so if you look when the show came out, you can see it was 2016. This is dated. Stop trying to not date it. <laughs> what? Okay, but whatever, Troll Hunters Season 1, finally on this show. And, you know, I, I think Troll Hunters, if we start with kind of personal history with it, Troll Hunters is one of those interesting shows for me, which I just saw coming out of nowhere. Like, there was no real build-up to it. There was no pre-existing fan base. I know there are books. I know it's based on a book series. I'm not sure how much it follows it, but it it was a thing that just kind of came out of nowhere, and I don't want to say blew up in popularity. It's nothing. It's nothing big, but the fandom I noticed picked up really quickly. Like this was something that I I was more interested in checking out because I saw so many people like it than I was interested in it myself when I first heard about it. What about you? I knew about it a little bit before it came out, but that wasn't because of the books, more so because of Guillermo del Toro. Mm -hmm. And I yeah, just, it... I kind of follow his work, like, vagueishly. So hearing that he was working on actual animation and an actual animation piece, I was a little bit more interested because that definitely seems like, you know, something that's not in his general wheelhouse, right? Like, that's not his go-to. So it was very interesting to yeah. see he's working on this. Like, and this is... Like, when you think of him. his name, you don't, like, you don't necessarily think about animation or mm -hmm. Netflix or, you know, and also TV animation, too. Like, you know, there are live-action directors like Zack Snyder who took, a, who took a chance directing an animated feature because Zack Snyder did uh, Guardians of Gahul, was it? Oh, don't ask that me. Owl movie, <laughs> I don't know. That, 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 that Owl movie, that's what I'm asking you. What, that that oh, animated it's, Owl movie. It's Guardians of Gahul. I just don't know if that yeah, was him, yeah. but yeah, it's Guardians of Gahul. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it was him. I'm really? saying a fact here. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying, that there, are, there is sometimes a transition for a live-action director to do animation. But you can actually animated. see that film. It wasn't yeah. dark. That That's not like him, I see. <laughs> It can't be. What do, you want to, what do you want me to do? I didn't write history. That's how it happened. Life doesn't make sense, my friend. You're older than me. You should but, know this shit. But Guardians of Gahul is actually okay compared to all of his other films. <laughs> so many people are going to yeah. be angry right now. <laughs> That's right. Am... I'm saying Guardians of Gahul is better than Watchmen and Justice League. Come at me. This... Well... The Snyder Cut of Justice League. Everything is better than the Whedon Cut. But we have another podcast about that. Go watch it. <laughs> Not the point. But yeah, so what, I'm, what I was about to say, there are live-action directors who made their transition to animation, but it was both feature animation, not... TV animation. I know Netflix is not technically TV, but fuck you, technicalities. <laughs> so... So it is interesting to see his name attached to it, and more interesting. This is something I actually wanted to ask you: is is there? How do I say? It? When you started watching this show, did you know there was gonna be like, for lack of a better term, a cinematic universe around it? No, I just figured. I, I figured like this might get like another season or two, maybe, but that was it. Right, like I figured it would just be Troll Hunters. I didn't think we'd get Troll Hunters, then Three Below, then like I didn't think Troll Hunters would turn into Tales of Arcadia, right? Yeah. No, because I I'm not sure. Okay, this is actually something I want to ask you, um, and it kind of leads to this. 
What, when did you start watching the show? When it first came out, I would say. Like, I when when it first um, came out, so... I first heard of it. So basically, <clears throat> when it came back, when it came out back in 2016, I started watching it. Essentially. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the reason I'm the reason I'm asking this is because when I started watching it, which was a bit before season three came out, like by the time I finished the show, season three was like a week, a month at most out, something around those lines. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> and when I started it, it was already known as Troll Hunters Tales of Arcadia. So I just assumed it was a subtitle at first. And then and then only as I started what like this is jumping a bit to season three, but not and not to give anything away from that, but someone told me that there's an episode in season three that kind of sets up the, another series in that universe. And I was like, okay, that's interesting because, you know, because I don't think, you know, speaking of the Justice League, since the DC animated universe back in the 90s, not a lot of people did something like this in TV. No, and, but... you know... And like there are the CW DC shows like Supergirl, Flash. Those those are technically in the same in the same canon. But it was interesting to see someone else do it. I think from what I've heard, right, the people behind <clears throat> the Dragon Prince want to do something similar to this, but it wasn't so much a thing of multiple different seasons of a show or multiple multiple different shows, I guess you'd say. But it was like. Yeah. cross media right they wanted to create that mm -hmm. like with book with yeah. the show and books and novels Which and other stuff like you can technically say that's what avatar is doing which you know ironic but it, avatar is just doing it many 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 years mm -hmm. apart <laughs> yeah okay but you know what i mean that you no. know <laughs> for our side there, uh, there are some you know there are some like i know there are uh, Avatar Kiyoshi books. I know <laughs> there's a Suki and uh, there's a Suki graphic novel coming out soon. Something like that. Yeah, yeah, I get you. Mm -hmm. But, but uh, yeah, but uh, you know, so when I first thought about it, this was I only found it interesting that someone would actually take a risk on something like this. Again, I didn't know the books, I, and I still don't. I just know they exist and that they confirm to Toby is Jewish, but. Other, other than those two things, I don't know how much the books matter to the show, like how loyal the show is, or how much, or how popular they were before the show. No clue. So, mm -hmm. I found, so I found it interesting that this was kind of greenlit with the idea of this is going to become a universe, this is going to become a franchise. And for all its world, I like it. I like the franchise. We we should clarify, right, by saying universe. What we mean is we don't mean when we say, you know, Tales of Arcadia, that's not just, you yeah. know that's not just multiple seasons following, say, you know, the main character of Tales of Arcadia, which is Jim, right? This yeah. Tales of Arcadia is, you know, Three Blow, which follows different characters, Wizards, which follows different characters, and Troll Hunters, which follows Jim. Right, and yeah. you've already seen us cover wizards. If you want to go find out which characters are important in that, go check out that video. We'll yeah, link it in the description go, below. Yeah, or um, maybe you can do that card that pops up oh. on the video, but we'll see. But uh, yeah, we all see being we smarter than me. <laughs> well, like that's new, <laughs> but wow. other than that, yeah, wow. you, 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 you gave me an opportunity, my friend. I'm taking it. You know what? To you too. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, back to, back on track for this. Um, you know, you say that, and that's something I actually want to bring up because you know we do know at this point that there's gonna be a movie. We do, that's gonna be the end of be all for this, and we'll cover the movie once that comes out. You can be sure. But it is interesting that the movie is still going with the troll hunter's name and not just the tales of Arcadia. I mean, I, I assume it, right, it's because Troll Hunters is the more popular. I don't think Three Below was as popular. Yeah, I assume to. I assume that too. And you know, and again, I, and 
there is there is an interesting thing, you know, talking about Trial Hunters without much spoilers here, but it is interesting that I think people just kind of started going referring to everything as Troll Hunters because that was the first one. Ergo, that's the one people connected with more. Mm. And and those and you know again we mentioned our our wizards review. Go back to that if you want to hear me say it for real. But one of the problems I had with wizards, despite overall really liking it, is that a lot of times it felt more like a troll hunter season four than a wizard season one. Yeah, I would say you know we'll get into it more when we cover that show. But I would say three below is more set apart than wizards. Yeah. Was. Like the first season at the very least, but yeah, we'll get to that much later. But yeah, I would say, you know, Wizards, yeah, I would agree with you. It felt very much like a Troll Hunter season four, whereas Three Below was very much its own thing, or at least felt more like its own thing. It was more mm-hmm, set yeah. apart. So again, we'll get to that in the upcoming weeks. So, so mm-hmm. uh, for the for the record, we are, we, I think we both came to Troll Hunters from basically word of mouth we didn't hear anything else besides that you had kind of a general interest that it was the del toro who was running the entire thing i had but... seen netflix advertising the trailer i really you know, and that's when i found out oh del toro doing animation interesting and so i was interested in it like before then like oh I'll definitely check this out when it releases and i did and i and i also heard of it because everyone had to point out that there was a cameo of two plus from how to turn dragon in the first episode we should also yeah that too that's also what i heard as well um we should mention though so you got into it after it had the tales of arcadia subtitle I think so, because again, when I started watching it, by the time I was caught up on the first two seasons, then season three was like between a week and a month out. So see, I was into, I got into it before it got, you know, they gave it that subtitle, right? Mm -hmm. So it was just Troll Hunters when I watched it. And then when I came back to watch like season two, three, it's like, Hills of Arcade, was that always there? I don't remember that part. <laughs> yeah, okay. And that's you when I found some... out, oh, they're doing like a whole universe thing and creating like a whole franchise deal here. Interesting. Mm-hmm. And I think it's worked out for them so well, so far so well. Yeah, like uh, for the record, just because we we'll we talked about the idea of it being a, a cinematic universe again, for like a better term, but this is not a bad thing by any means. On the contrary... I appreciate the effort. I really like what they did. You I th- know, I think for a brand new IP, I think it's done quite well for it to try the whole, you know, quote unquote cinematic universe style of stuff for a brand new IP. Mm-hmm. And so, actually, talking about season one for for this, uh, what are your thoughts on that? On uh, season one specifically, non spoilers or spoilers. Non-spoilers yet. Uh, season one, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I think it's, it, you know, you can definitely get that kind of setup y feel to it. But also, it's, you know, 26 episodes, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, which is, by the way, it's is really kind of off-putting when you see the, that one season has 26 episodes. And also, we'll get to this later, but you can feel this was meant to be split. But we'll get to that. Uh, I I think overall enjoyed it. I think, mm-hmm. you know, it, it, again, you can kind of feel that bit of setup in the first 13 half. When you get into the later 13 half, you can tell, you, you know, you feel more like, okay, this is, you know, when we're more getting into it. We're more, you know, finishing up this season and we're having a strong, or at least I would say strong ending. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, so for me, I really like season one, and like you said, it while it is more of a setup season, I don't think it wastes too much time on setup. Like, the first two episodes really give you what you need, and maybe episode three a bit a bit too, and, and then it's just... And you just keep going from there. Like, they don't really waste too much time with you, and they let you enjoy what you want to, what you are coming to see. And I appreciate it. 
Agreed. And, and you know, on that note, I also really like the character. Like, Jim is a fun protagonist, and, and you know, Toby is a, fun, is a fun comic relief. There are points where he goes a bit overboard, if you ask me, but he's the, I still like him fine. Uh, Clara, Clara I actually really like as a love interest for the main guy because she actually gets on the action fast. They don't, like... By the by the end, I actually does she get out by the end of season? I think by the end of season one, she's already aware of everything yeah, she's, that's happening. They, she's in it. She's you know very much like a part of it by the end of season one. Like I think she's in it from some of the earlier episodes before you know. Yeah, the, because, before we get to episode thirteen, she's already in it. I believe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, which again I like because it, it kind of the, because. When the show started, it kind of does follow that superhero idea, you know, kind of Spider-Man in a sense that you have you have the geek, you have the geek uh, main character who's like unpopular in school. There's a bully, there's the girl he likes, but she doesn't really doesn't really pay much attention to him. And I'm like, oh my god, how much? If she's not gonna recognize him. When he has the armor on, I'm gonna lose my mind. But no, they're not. Thankfully, they're not doing that because you know his face is fully revealed. You can tell it's him. So, so I enjoy the fact that she is actually getting a piece of the action. And you know, we obviously again, Wizards review. You can watch it now. There's we see her develop throughout both Roll Hunters and the franchise in general, and I appreciate it. Yeah, I agree. It's you know uh, yeah it's episode twelve actually that they that she's brought in and everything but it's not I don't think she starts like being a fighter quote unquote until a little bit while later but yeah like she's definitely mm-hmm. involved and in it fairly quickly and uh, again like you said a very fun character one of my personal favorites and I think uh, again a lot of the back and forth here is also exceptionally yeah. well and done. also all the, the other character and yeah and so again with the characters I really like Blinky. Like, I always like the old mentor kind of character, and he he's a good mentor. I like him. I like his voice. I don't know who the actor is. Uh, at least I don't remember the name right now, but if I can he, has a really, he has a really cool voice. And, you know, uh, how can you not love Arg? Yeah. Like, come on. Arg is a teddy bear. And, uh, and of course, I also like the... Um, what's, what's the name of the troll who's... Who's you know the son of the previous troll hunter? I forgot his name. Oh, that's uh. uh... Let me see if I can find it. Well, you find it. Draw. I'll, I'll draw. Yes, yes. So I also like him. You know, I like him because you know you think again. It's something you think. Oh, he's the guy who's gonna think. Oh, the main character took something from me and stuff. But again, this is like an episode. And they fix it in a really mature, I even say, and fun way that gives more that you know characters develop so early in the show. That's great, awesome. Thank you. It's Kelsey Grammer, by the way, who does the voice for Blinky. Uh, okay, good. Yeah. So with that said, um, what the the things I do have against the sh- the, this season specifically, again, 26 episodes is a bit too much for a season. And not only can I tell where it was obviously supposed to be split, but there's also this vibe of we're spending a lot of time on fillers, even though there are a lot of plot-related episodes. There are some there are some episodes that that just show up out of nowhere, and we're focusing on things that don't really matter. But I get it. Season one, you're kind of trying to get your bearings and everything. I, I get it, but it still makes it a bit like okay, this is this kind of episode. Let's skip. As even one says. even then, I think a lot of it is still good setup for the future. Like you you can tell oh, yeah, right definitely. that they definitely plan to make this into more of a you know, cinematic universe style thing from the get go that this wasn't something, oh, this is actually doing really well. Let's just, you know, run with this. Like you can tell 
there was a plan there to do this if it did well, but they still had it set up in a way where, okay, we can just do a few seasons of Troll Hunters and that's it, right? Like, you can tell, like, there's actually pretty good setup here for the future for, like, Three Below and Wizards and stuff like that, right? Yeah. Like, I don't think anything stands out as, wait a minute, that don't work at all. Like, there's not a ton of that, I would say. And if it is, it, it very much doesn't stick out in my memory too, too much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, overall, I like the show. And mm -hmm. I like how some things were indeed, uh, you know, built up on in the future. But, some, but there are still some points where it's like, okay, you guys, you can, you can see that these people were still trying to find their ground in other places, which, don't get me wrong, they did a great job, but you can still feel the feet weren't all the way in inside the pool. I, you know, it, it's worth mentioning, right? I didn't know this, but we should before we jump straight into talking about you know more spoiler stuff. We should you know talk a bit about apparently Del Toro envisioned the idea of the show as a live action television series at first instead. So, mm -hmm. what would you have thought of a live action Troll Hunter? Um, now, the reason well, it didn't was because budget, so just to be clear. Yeah, I, this is what I was about to say. Like, I can see it working, but you also need to understand that, you know, say what you want about that movie, you need to, you kind of need to do something that's like the live action Jungle Book from 2016. So, you... You need something. You like uh, obviously there are going to be a lot of motion captures and stuff because you may can't make the trolls not CG, and mm -hmm. there are a lot of trolls and a lot of fight scenes with the trolls. And honestly, I think sticking to animation was a was a wise choice, if you ask me. I would agree. I, I would agree. I don't. It would be interesting, but I don't think it would work as well as animation did for this show. I think. I don't think it would have gained as much popularity at that point, right? Yeah, and you know, obviously, I'm not saying that you can't necessarily make people connect with characters in a movie than in the show, but I think the fact that there is a show and there is a lot of adventures to go through with these characters, it's also what what helps that the, these characters and this franchise in general to stay on people's minds because you see so much of them. And I don't think a movie could really... Because the movie would most likely be an origin story. Mm -hmm. And and like, and like in this show, you, you get the origin story in like a two-parter. Like you get, two, you get technically 44 minutes of the origin and then the rest is happening. So imagine kind of cramming... Uh, imagine cramming those... Like let's say it's 13 episodes into one movie and knowing that there's going to be more to come. I don't think it would work as well, but at the same time, I haven't read any scripts. I had, you know, there's no idea of how this would have gone. So, oh, sure, sure. <laughs> but at the end of the day, I think sticking to a show and keeping it animated fully was a smart move. Mm -hmm. Some ideas just work better as animation. Okay. With that said, spoilers. Mm -hmm. Let's jump straight into well, it. Yeah, but, okay, like, let's do the traditional three, two, one. You're still here? Good. You know, <laughs> if, I, am, I assume if you all listen to this, you already know all the spoilers, but... If you don't, let's, leave let's... now. Go watch the show. We'll be back. We'll be waiting. You know, and then come back. We'll be waiting. Mm -hmm. Guess I'm going to tell Walk I'm skipping tomorrow because I am waiting for the person to finish. Well, not keeping the recording going until they finished it. This is true. I am, of course, joking, but let's move on. So, <laughs> Troll Hunter Season 1, spoiler talk. I'm just, I just want to open with this, because if I don't, there's a good chance one of my friends is going to kill me. Uh-huh. The first episode starts with Jim cooking, cooking and, apparently, baking bread. There you, there you go, Jaya. I mentioned it. You're welcome. You don't have to keep reminding me. And we and you will make this a meme one day. I'm counting on you. Then moving on. Okay. <laughs> okay. I have I have weird conversations with my friends, but sounds I, like it. 
Mm-hmm. Well, you know, you know, we've been doing this podcast for five <laughs> years. You know, you know what the, you know the types of conversations I'm involved in because you are a part of them sometimes. Unfortunately. I actually have no comment. <laughs> Moving on with Troll Hunters. Moving on. To, so, um, again, I kind of said for a setup, this is a really cool setup because also I, I like how the show so already throws you into the action. You see two trolls fighting each other. And then the supposed Troll Hunter is sacrificing himself in the hopes of keeping, of, you know, of keeping the amulet safe mm-hmm. from... From an evil bad guy. Yep. And and only the this like this intro like, again as someone who's just I heard a lot about this I don't know anything else I just heard a lot of people like this I start watching and already this got me interested this got me hooked. Yeah, I think it's a great opening. You know, it's normal everyday life for Jim who then you know finds the amulet and like you see these two trolls fighting and I love how the the entire fight has to be done in the shadows and you you know they're avoiding the sunlight again it's like well choreographed it's well animated beautiful looking in my opinion like it genuinely you know it's I, I didn't mention it before but I would say this is probably one of the best looking and best stories from a DreamWorks animated series that we've gotten thus far Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, and also, and again, I like how I'm not, um, because there were a lot of How to Turn Dragon comparisons when this came out. Mm-hmm. And not, and I assume not because Hiccup and Jim look kind of alike. But, uh, and if you don't think they're alike, my, my mother went, you know, went inside my room when I was watching an episode. She, she saw Jim and she was like, I don't remember Hiccup looking like that. <laughs> Fair, fair. Oh. I mean, they are in then some it, ways similar characters too, so I can see why people yeah. would make the comparisons. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, but at the same time, it's not a bad comparison to make. You know, they're not, he, Jim is not a blatant copy. He, while he's similar, he's still, he still has his own vibe, <laughs> you know. And not uh, and not just in the sense that oh it's like hiccup in modern times. No, there are ways where I can say yeah they're different. They are mm-hmm. similar, but there are differences. And one of them is that Jim can cook. <laughs> also, um, one thing I I re- I enjoy is that you know just from the start of this. Just from the start, you can tell that Jim has a really good connection with his mother, who is an, who is a doctor and is barely at home. And you can tell that he's kind of the man of the house because his father is not around. And and you know this is already touching on on the heartstrings, but I also I also enjoy the fact that the mother is not just. A moral supporting. She's she's a legit plot. She's a legit part of the plot, you know, because you know Strickler, Jim's teacher, and also a troll working for the bad guys. You know, wants to get it on with her, and there's this and there's this entire thing of yeah. Obviously, I don't want my mother to date the teacher, but it's also the teacher is a bad guy. I don't want him to hurt her, and then and it also kind of comes uh, all comes back to the fact. He can tell he can tell her that he's a troll hunter, and she takes it and she actually takes it hard when he refuses to say what uh, you know why he's so beaten up uh, lately, why he's why he's suffering so much damage, and she kind of she doesn't say it, but she kind of implies that she's disowning him near the end, and it's like, ouch. Like you can feel her pain because again, once Jim's father left the picture, there's uh, there's this thing that he was the that they had a, a really close relationship, and you can feel her pain. And I'm like, I feel for these two. I'm gl- I'm glad that they made her a character in this. Yeah, I, I agree. Like you you can tell they're extremely close, and you can tell there's this relationship of, you know, they tell each other everything, right? They don't keep secrets from one another, and to have jim do that to her right it hurts and for jim to to do that hurt to to her it hurts him as well right like you can tell that you can tell mm-hmm. this close yeah. relationship here 
Well, you know, when your mother implies that she is basically disowning you because you're trying to protect her, yeah, that would hit a person bad. Very bad. You know, even getting into, like, <clears throat> the later season, right, when she learns about all the trolls and she's there trying to support him, right, in the best way that she can. And, you know, you have her basically in this, you know, setup where once they, you know, remove the curse on her, right, she loses her memory of everything. Like, she, you know, she does. She sits there and tells him, like, hey, don't let me forget this. Tell me. You know, I'm here to help you. And he's like, yeah, sure, I'll do that, knowing that he's never going to do so, knowing that he's going to lie to her. Yeah. Again, like, it, it's very impactful, right, because of the relationship these two have. And and this is where I come back to, like, they do character-to-character -character moments extremely well throughout this show, right? You know, Jim and Claire, Jim and Toby, Jim and his mom, and you know, all and these also, other people, too. Yeah, and also Toby and Og, even, mm. because the, because I don't remember the full context. Again, it's been it's been a while, but... There's a point where, you know, Arg needs to hide in Toby's house. And, you know, Toby, kind of, it's implied that other, other than, you know, Blinky, Toby is the only one who kind of showed Arg, you know, sympathy and actually tried to befriend him. And he takes uh, Toby as a legit friend. Like when Toby calls him his wingman, they are, he, he starts calling him that. And that's a really cool friendship they have there. Like I see I I want them to not lose each other. It's you got me invested in a boy and his troll, Del Toro. <laughs> it's even more impressive, right? Because most people would see you know, these two are kind of the more comedic side characters, right? And most people and most shows, you know, those comedic side characters, they just kind of fall to the wayside. They don't become yeah. anything majorly important or they don't have these really impactful character moments, right? And these really impactful relationships that you, know, you do feel for when something bad or something good happens, right? And again, they manage that with Toby and Ark, right? These two kind of comedic side characters, right? Again, they, they give them something, you know, a lot more. Even with, you know, uh, a few other side characters that develop their relationship in the later, in later season two and season three, right? Like, you know, mm -hmm. you, you see, you know, the bully character, Steve, right? Like, he vastly changes compared to season one in, in, a, in, very, in, in some very good ways, right, in my opinion. Same with uh, another very minor character, Eli Pepperjack, I believe it is. You know, one of yes. the kids that gets bullied by Steve, right? He also changes in some very interesting ways in later seasons mm -hmm. for Troll Hunters and even Three Below. Mm-hmm. So again, a, a lot of good stuff that happens. In, yeah, in and life. also because another friend of mine who won't leave me alone if I won't mention him, uh, Steve, <laughs> Steve Palchuk. He's also, you know, he's starting as your regular bully and you see him develop. And by the end of this season, like in the second part, he's actually st starting to respect Jim and even mm -hmm. help him. Yeah, and you know, you and that's something that you can see, you do see continued on and further expanded upon in later seasons and in later shows. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so yeah, and also I mentioned before, uh, Drow, I really like that, you know, he's initially pissed at Jim for, you know, kind of taking, taking his role. He believed he was going to be the troll hunter and all of a sudden this human guy gets the job. And you know, when they fight, they have this role that whoever wins the fight needs to kill the other. And But when Jim doesn't, Daryl actually respects him for that and, and even offers to help him. He trains him to be a better troll hunter, which is, again, in any other show, he will just be like, this changes nothing. But no, they actually do something with this. And you can tell that they grow as friends, like, thank you. Thank you for actually treating people like people. Actually, he's a troll, but you know what I mean. Yeah, you know, I also really love the interaction between one of our main villains in the first half of the season, Strickler, right? I love the, <laughs> uh, you know, the, the quiet tension there of Will, you know, of Strickler and Jim finding out each other is their sworn enemy in a way, right? And these two... <laughs> trying to battle it out while still keeping their kind of yeah, identities when, when, a secret, right? 
yeah, when James when James' mother invites uh, Stricker for dinner, that is a great episode. That yeah, is a great that, scene. I believe that happens in episode. Uh, where is that? That's episode. That's a little bit of a later episode, I think. Which episode mm -hmm. is it? I think it's even maybe even in the second part. I don't. Yeah, that. episode eleven is what it is. <clears throat> oh, so it's like really. It's really before the end of the first part. Okay, mm -hmm. makes sense. It's also interesting, right? Too, because you you do have you know Jim's mom kind of falling for Strickler as well, right? Yeah, and this is another thing I like that he's not necessarily using a ma magic on her, or no, you can tell that in a sense he does legit like her, and she legit likes him, and mm -hmm. him liking her is also part of the reason why he defects by the end of this. Mm -hmm. And why you see him, you know, change allegiances in the later half after they've kind of, after he's kind of defeated as a villain. Yeah, that, again, that's why I said he defects. That's the definition. I, I will say, right, comparing the two halves, I think the second half, you know, and, and I will tell our, you know, listeners, I am going somewhat off of memory here. I didn't get to fully catch up like I would have liked, but I do remember the second half. For me personally, at least, being a little bit more slower, feeling like, you know, like it was like the show was starting to overstay its welcome a bit too long, and like the second half was a little bit weaker. Like Engelrot wasn't as strong of a villain as say Strickler and uh, Gunmar was. Gunmar was. <clears throat> yeah, well, I mean, Gunmar also no. felt a bit weaker as a villain, but he wasn't there for much of it, right? He was very much in the background. Like, Anger Rock has do, his moments, but it just, it doesn't carry the show as much as the, the thing, other four. Gunmar has this thing that I think he has a good, he has good presence in the mm. show. He has a good voice for a villain. He has a cool design. And you can tell that he's one of those villains that plays the slow game, at least at first, that he kind of plays the slow game, but... He's also he also has a plan for the slow game. He's not doing that for the sake of playing the slow game. Mm -hmm. But then again, when I because I think halfway through the what it's called halfway through the the you know halfway through the season uh, the first part of the season, mm -hmm. they bring up the fact that he can take uh, daylight, Jim sword. Yeah. That he can he can use it against Jim. He can just take it from Jim and use it. I think this this is a problem because okay, first time it happens, it's like oh no, we can use it. But then I think they just start overplaying it too much as he shows up more. Yeah, yeah, I I get what you're saying somewhat. Mm -hmm. Uh, obviously, by the end of the, of the day, they find a loophole around it, and they defeat him, and, you know, that's all well and good. But I think up until this point, we need to split up the confrontations more. Mm -hmm. And, but other than that, I do enjoy the villains. Like, I, I, like the, I like the designs of them, I like their powers, and how... And, and this is another thing I like. I kind of like that, you know, Jim, again, you can see Jim's development as a warrior too throughout this because he starts off not the best fighter. And you can even say that some of his victories are, you know, luck based, you know, some of them. But as the season goes along and he, and, you know, this, this isn't as long as we established, you can see that he does get a lot more competent in his fighting abilities and his strategies. Like, he did, he did, it, this is not just an origin story where you see the character just learning. No, no, no. You can, you can all, you already get to see him also as a competent fighter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Like it, you know, you you see him develop and grow as the season goes along. I agree. Like it's it's very enjoyable to see that. Mm -hmm. And with that said, uh, so um, there's a. This season is basically two, because it, for one, 26 episodes, and two, episode 13 does feel like a season finale. You know what I say? Mm -hmm. Wolf? No, oh, no, I, I get you. you. Yeah, because 
And this is the thing when I got to it, it's like, man, this is like really, not even in terms of if I didn't know there was more after this, I would say, you know what, this is even a good place to close up. <laughs> Wait, because... so, you, so you think episode, just so I'm clear, you think episode 13 was a good ending spot? Yeah. Uh, I... Obviously, obviously, give or take some things, right? But, fair, fair. you know, but it's it's one of those, you know, that they beat, they beat Gunma. Okay, that's good. And they also... One of well, the they things beat Strickler. Gunma wasn't yeah. technically there. Technically. Okay, that's... <laughs> That's, again, memory is a bit hazy, so if I oh, no, get no, something they wrong... They beat Bular, like, the, the big, you know, kind mm -hmm. of... Like, Bular's very much kind of a weaker villain, right? Like, you, you kind of mm -hmm. end up following more Strickler as the main villain in the first 13 eps or yeah. so than because, Bular. Because he, because he is more connected to Jim, personally. Uh -huh. Like, Bular's more connected to Gunmar, and Bular, I think, is, like, Gunmar's son or something like that. And Bular's not a bad villain, don't get me wrong, but Bular does feel like the weaker villain. Like, it, it definitely, Strickler's the main villain there. Like, Strickler's the, the big, you know, the big the bigger focus. Bular doesn't yeah. get as much. Mm -hmm. That is kind of true. So, you know, they end, up, they end up killing, you know, in episode 13, they end up killing Bular and defeating Strickler, kind of, and Gunmar's not quite freed yet at that point, and it's not bad, don't get me wrong. I, I could see them ending a season there, but with that said, I think it's a weaker overall season than uh, a weaker overall ending than uh, something rotten this way comes, which is the episode 26 ending. Mm -hmm. No, because episode 26 ends with basically, oh, we know there's going to be another season, so we mm -hmm. need to kind of make it a cliffhanger ending. Well, I mean, episode 26 ending. ends with, like, you know, we, we've had this entire thing of the Darklands and how terrible and bad the Darklands is and like you know we never truly see Gunmar come out of the Darklands until like the next you know full season right you know so this is the first time where episode 26 is you know where we go into the Darklands you know we see Jim going into the Darklands and everyone else is just left outside of it like Jim's the only one who goes yeah. in like he you know abandons everyone else because it's like his journey and he has to do it alone no one else can come with him because it'd be too dangerous right all that stuff right all that good hero stuff yeah because but again it feels more like uh, it does fit jim's character to do something like this but at the, but at the same time it's like yeah you really needed a cliffhanger on the game to draw people into the next season didn't you i mean it, it works really well, though. I think, like, yeah, no, it works. It works. I'm not saying it's not, but at the same, I mean, they time, did spend pretty... 26 episodes building up the Darklands to be like this terrible thing. So to see him yeah, go but there the is time, really heavy. But at the same time, let's assume that because it's, it's the first season, what if there was no season two? Good thing there was. <laughs> yeah, good thing there was. I'm just saying. <laughs> And I just, in retrospect, it's really not a bad idea. I mean, yeah, obviously, you know, if there was only one season, that ending wouldn't have worked, right? It, it would have been very like, the fuck, what happens? Where, where do we go from here? What, what, what? You know. Fan fiction writers <clears throat> go. Mm. So in that sense, if we were, excuse me, if in that sense, if we were only going to get one season ever, then I would agree Episode 13 is somewhat the better ending because everything's kind of And again, I should, stress, though, <clears throat> I should stress, right? For the record, there's nothing wrong with that ending these days. Yeah, but I'm yeah. also looking but I'm also looking at this because if we were to review this back when it came out and we may or may not have known if a second season was even happening then I would have a problem with that, with that kind of ending. Mm. Because Understood. it's obviously, we need to keep the people coming back. But but at the same time, what if the people didn't tune in at all? This is something, this is a risk you sometimes take. It, it, and... it can be disappointing, like, you know, to know that mm -hmm. there's the possibility that you'll never get the, you know, full ending to this, that you'll never know. Yeah. It can be very disappointing. And, and you I know, I... I and I know for a, for a fact because a lot of shows I like 
and uh, and the uh, Donna Cliffhanger, which was never resolved because mm-hmm. either poor, poor writing or some behind the scenes stuff. You can never know. So I, it's just a personal pet peeve I have with these kind of things. But at the time of this recording, there's not there, it doesn't really matter because we know it went to great things and we know there was a, there was a plan and we got a second season and even a third one. So yeah. no problem with it right now. But at the time, I could have seen myself being a bit more annoyed with it. Agreed. Agreed. I absolutely understand that. Like, there's a lot of shows and movies out there that I have watched that just nothing after the first season, and it'd be great if there was, but there is not. And it's a shame when it happens that way. Like, you know, it, it can be very much a bummer to know that, you know, it, it can be very much a bummer to know that this thing you got into isn't finished and probably never will be now, I, for whatever the reason may be. It sucks. <laughs> Especially when they leave it on major cliffhanger that you have no clue how things could go from there. Yeah. Again, Bindel. Not fun. <laughs> um, but, but you know, with, with all that said, I still think season one is a, is a good watch, you know, from the very few episodes I got to catch up on before this. Again, very few. And I think I mostly went over the reasons as to why. We should jump into a bit of, you know, from memory, favorite episode that you can remember. You know, favorite, something that you really episode. enjoyed. Hmm. I think it may be the one where we mentioned um, Jim, and, Jim and Strickler, you know, constantly changing, you know, into their hero and villain attires, let's say, while they're trying to attend the dinner that Jim's mother is holding up. Because, again, this is... I mentioned this many times in the podcast, and people who know me know this, but I'm a huge Spider-Man guy. And the thing, <laughs> and the, the thing that really makes a Spider-Man story work, you know, if you look at the really good ones, it, or the ones that people generally like the most, are the, are the stories where... Peter Parker and Spider-Man's lives are connected. You know that something from something something Spider-Man does can affect someone Peter Parker likes, so someone from his life is going to suffer for it. And I think that episode really kind of brought this entire build-up of Jim's mother and Strickler uh, falling for each other. I think that that's the episode that really brought it into its full potential. And actually, and ran all the way with it, and it's both intense and funny. So, fair. I'd say, I'd say that's my favorite one. I think for me, it would have to be possibly. Uh, a, let me see. Yeah, possibly the Shattered King episode eighteen or. It would be kind of <clears throat> a go between two these two, which is you know, episode eighteen, the Shattered King, or episode twenty five, a night to remember. That's when you see, you know, you, you by episode twenty five, you've seen Jim and Strickler having this back and forth, and you know, you've seen Strickler basically, you know, there's a curse on him and uh, Jim's mom Barbara, where whatever happens to one happens to the other. So if one happens to die, they both die, right? Yeah. <clears throat> and Strickler's been, ha- you know, and there's this uneasy truce, this uneasy alliance between the two where they have to work together in order to defeat Anger Rot. Anger Rot. So, yes. you know, again, it's it's very, that's a very enjoyable episode to see, you know, enemy, once enemies become friends. And you also, you know, there is this like, you know, hey, you know, again, there is that kind of tension between Jim and Strickler where Jim did like Strickler. You know, he was more than happy to kind of have Strickler as a father figure in his life because he not, was good. Not, I don't, like, I won't necessarily say that he kind of liked him, as well, well, but I think it was just more that he was happy there was someone out there that was making his mother happy. It was again, it's think, in, because it's important to him that his mother would be happy, and if he did, he probably would have no problems with that. I, I think the, just before, so happens that Strickler, that Strickler was uh, with the bad guys. But I, I think, you know, before Jim learns that Strickler is a changeling, there is this kind of res- mutual respect, right? There is this, you know, hey, I could 
you know, I could see myself calling you father at some point in the future, right? Like there was that respect there, right? There was, you know, a very mutual respect between the two. But once they both found out they were enemies, that, you know, mutual respect very quickly faded away when Strickler started trying to kill Jim, right? Like, yeah, no, it's not there anymore. <laughs> but yeah, again, yeah. you can kind of see that that tension of, you know, there was something there between the two before all of this reappear in A Night to Remember. You can tell that tension is there and you can tell, you know, they do both very much care for Barbara, right? You know, Jim cares for, for his mother and Strickler does care for her as someone he did, you know, love, right? Before mm -hmm. all of this, right? <clears throat> so there is that connection there. There is that uneasy tension there of, you know, we both want to save the same person, Maybe not for the same exact reasons, but we both do care. We both do have feelings, you know. Again, that tension is there, and it just makes it a very palpable episode, I would say. And then episode 18, I enjoy because, you know, that's kind of the start of Claire's growth, right? Of where she first gains the, the Shadow Staff, and you start to yeah. see her become more and more of a badass fighter, and it's just great to kind of see that growth and that's her just become, actually something, coming to her own. That's actually that's actually <clears throat> something I want to point out that the reason and the main reason kind of Claire goes into all of this, the reason she even you know gets involved is because the trolls gonna kidnap her little brother and yep. Mika. Yep. And it and the thing is that. She's fully aware of the fact that uh, there's a troll who's pretending to changeling. be her uh, baby. Yeah, there's a changeling. That <laughs> it's a troll. What the, what the hell you want from it's me? It's not quite That's a because... troll. The trolls would be angry if you called a changeling a troll. Let's be. Let's get our lore right here, HC. God. Well, thank God they're not real. <laughs> that you know of. <laughs> uh, okay. The you internet begs the... to differ, HC. They're everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you're right. There are also internet trolls, and yes, I know the joke. The show make that joke. I don't. It did. Know. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's in, it's in the third season, but so we got some time. But we'll we do. Mm -hmm. And stop texting me, people. I'm recording. <laughs> it's the trolls, man. It's the trolls. Yeah. Oh, they, they already know. Me. Um. <laughs> that's all for this episode of the Outcast. <laughs> uh huh. But yeah, like, you know, again, like speaking of, I think it's, oh, I forget the the changeling's name, but speaking of him as a side character, right? Like seeing him also develop, right? He's very yeah, much so comedic side character, but he still develops. Like it's just. Yeah. Again, this is the point. This is what I was trying to get to before <laughs> you rudely interrupted me. That for one, he develops and he actually starts like in the heroes and you can tell that Quell does care for him. They actually do mm -hmm. build that kind of sibling relationship, even though it's clearly not her brother. Yeah, like you can tell, like, you know, she does see him as a bit of a little brother, right? And he he hates that, but also kind of loves that, right? Like, it, it's sweet, right? You know, there is something there. It's it's enjoyable. He's kind of like King from the Owl House. Like, he hates being called cute, but he won't, uh, but... He won't shy away being being pimpled. That's genuinely actually a really good analogy. <laughs> like that's probably the most you know straightforward analogy you can come up with in reference. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, Dana Terrence, maybe she took the inspiration from this. Who knows? Probably, maybe. We will never know. You know some, uh, just the just the thought someone saw uh, you know wrong Enrique and was like, you know what this uh, character needs? Alex Hirsch's voice. <laughs> there, done. Oh boy. Hello, HC. Are you still there? You're breaking up someone on my end. You're going robot. It would probably be because Discord is dying on me. Hello? Hello. Discord has okay. stopped dying on me. I can hear you once more. <laughs> okay. Discord, it, was, it wasn't you. It was me on my end. Well, I know you did, but... Okay. Technical difficulties. Yes. In show, that's, you know... Yay, Discord. <laughs> that's how it be. Alex Selsh has held me and he's trying to kill our connection, but who knows? 
With with that said, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Um, if there are... Actually, do we see Kyle's parents in this season, or does this happen after? No, I think we see a little bit of them, but not much. Like, it, tell it's... me, tell me how Father doesn't look like Vigo. I, I would have to look it up. It's been so long. I don't remember. Okay, I just to see, listeners, he's gonna find this picture and he's gonna tell me that I'm right again. Just wait. No, I'll, tell I'll tell you. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. You're wrong. Just, just. Yeah, I was just about to say you were gonna go troll and say I'm wrong, but deep down, you know I'm right. Let's see. Can I find it? Probably not. Right. Giant, troll hunters, Quill's father. That's all you need to. Google, and that's all you need to Google. It's not that easy, HC God. Can't you type? What's not easy about it? I gotta find an image. <laughs> yeah, so go to Google Images and type in Show Uncle's Quill's father. There he is. Okay, I got it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I remember this <laughs> being a thing too, also, you know, that. A lot of people compare different characters looking to different characters. And yeah, I can I can see how people can say like, oh, you know, this looks like Vigo from you know Race to the Edge. Yeah. Well honestly, it's not it's not something that's only happening in this kind of show, you know. Oh, no. A lot of times in anime, in animated movies and stuff, people will just reuse the model. Disney does that a lot. So mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I mean, you, you can good. tell it is a different model, right? It's not the same model because yeah. like, it is a different yeah. build and oh. stuff, but the facial yeah, features um, are similar if you look at them mm -hmm. side by side. Yeah, again, Disney does this a lot. So, with that said, anything else? Because... I mean, other than yeah. continuing to praise the character work here in just different episodes, uh, I guess we can go one last thing. Least favorite episode. Uh, that's <laughs> actually... What do I choose? What do I choose? No, that's that's either a good thing of, oh, there's actually a lot of good episodes, so it's hard to choose, or that's actually a bad thing of, actually, there's a lot of bad episodes, and it's easy to choose. I just don't know which one to choose. <laughs> which one is that? <laughs> which one is that? Um, mm. No, it's more, it's more of the fact that I know I have some, but... You you know what I I think it's I think it's the <clears> one with I think it's the one with the gnomes. Yeah yeah I can see that one too like that would definitely be a weaker it, it is definitely a weaker episode where it's them chasing the gnomes around the troll market I believe right. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah, when we kind of because... get gnome Chomsky introduced and he becomes a character somewhat too right. Yeah and you know because Toby I takes him for a pet I believe. I don't I actually don't really like chompy honestly you know it's just it's cute i suppose but it really it's it fun but it's very yeah. much like this is a small side story like his, his relationship with a doll is it's it's funny it's cute it's adorable but meh you know i, I get that i completely agree like if it wasn't there i wouldn't miss it but the fact that it is there like i don't mind it but again if it wasn't there I wouldn't miss it. I wouldn't know. It wouldn't bother me. It's cool that they do work him back into the plot, and he becomes important in other ways, but... Eh. Mm -hmm. I agree. Like, it's something that's there... Um, it, it's something that's there, but, but at the same time, it feels like it's there because our episode is a few seconds short from the 22 minute mark we need to fill it with something yeah i would um, agree i think that's probably one of the weaker episodes yeah and we didn't talk about it right i will say this also has a well-written romance in it right you know generally when you do yeah, romance and shows like these yeah jim and clary like generally when you do even toby and his romantic relationship to a degree background but still yeah, but fairly well this is not but, this is not the thing that happens until later though like in the yeah. first season though i agree i agree that you know, you can say they're traditional, and I'd even call them, and I'd even call them a bit vanilla when it comes to romances in these type of stuff shows. But mm -hmm. again, what kind of makes it work again is the writing. 
Like you yeah. can tell that they you can tell that they're in love. You can tell that they like each other, love each other even. And that's what make it that's what makes well, it, it work. It's not just that. I, I would say it's the writing for future setup too. Like you can, you know, looking at this season and watching it you would probably come off thinking if you only watched the first season, you'd probably come off thinking again, like what you said, that it's very meh, like the relationships, like it's, it's well-written, but otherwise meh, it's kind of vanilla. It's very, you know, traditional. Eh, I, I don't see what people see in this pairing, right? with Jim and Claire, but like, as you I get into see- the later seasons, I would say that changes somewhat where you can see, you know, Claire and Jim are both very much their own characters before the relationship, right? Like, generally when you have relationship writing in shows like this, sometimes one character might tend to suffer to a degree, to to some small degree or to some large degree, where the relationship is more their character than their character is, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I get you. And, And I would say Troll Hunters does manage to avoid that problem. Though, again, if you watch the first season, you might disagree. But again, I think based off the first season and the seasons that follow, Claire is and maintains very much her own character, as does Jim. Yeah, I agree. And that's actually something I do. I enjoy, too, is that Claire is not a damsel in distress. She no. is a character. She and and that's even that, before she gets the shadow stuff too. Like she's able to true. handle herself. She's able to protect herself like, and I, do well, things. Actually, I see, another thing I like is that when Jim is auditioning for the play for the Rome- Romeo and Juliet play, she actually flips him over her, her head. Like, damn, that was a, that was pretty cool. <laughs> yep, she's very much strong and can she very much handle and take care of herself. Which again, it's great. And that's not again, and even that, it's not a focus of her character. That's just who she is that's what she can do she can handle herself right you know a lot of the times like oh this girl's a badass so we gotta really focus in on that and make that a part of her character no it's just she's able to handle herself that's it yeah like, it's like you know nothing nothing more to it she's just a girl who knows how to defend herself yep. they exist yep and they also don't call attention to it. Like, there's nope. no episode that should call attention to it. It's just the status quo. Deal with it. Yeah, no, it, generally in shows like this, you know, in the past, and some in the few, and, and some, like, you know, in, in the current time, I guess you'd say, right, you know, you'll have characters be like, whoa, you can do that? You can protect yourself? Whoa. And it's like, mm-hmm. why do oh, we... Why, there's why? Like a, oh, there's like, a, oh, there's like a tragic backstory as to why she even studied something yep. to begin with. Yep. So, yep. you know, so <laughs> thankfully, not the case. Nope, it's just, you know, she can do that. She's capable, uh, as any you know, human being would be. Mm-hmm. And also, you know, uh, this is another thing that, you know, she's, forgive me if I'm confusing, but she's Spanish, right? She's either Spanish or Mexican. Yes, I believe so. She's of Spanish, some Spanish descent, right? Yeah, yeah of, I somewhere think in there. I'm, I think Spanish because I believe it's Spanish. If I'm wrong, correct me on this. But, but, but that's also a thing that you know you have good representation for, you know, Spanish people. Yeah. So and again, there's no mentioning of it. Like she might speak Spanish every once in a while, but again, there's nothing calling it. You know, there's nothing that really brings it to the foreground. Like, we're progressive, or we are woke, like some other studios do. And <laughs> Disney... <clears throat> Listen, Disney's not behind. You're just too fast. So give them a chance. Well, in that case, Disney, you're too slow. <laughs> And you, I think and we've literally you, made this joke in a previous episode. And, and, for, and, for the, and for the record, Wolf, you can blame me for that Sonic reference. You got me into this one. So you're the one to blame, buddy. I mean, again, that's just Disney's slogan. I can't help but that's Disney's slogan, right? You know, their slogan is, we're not behind, you're just too fast. That is just Disney's slogan. And I swear and we've made is- this same joke in a previous episode. <laughs> Well, I, you know, how many times we did this? Well, probably not. Probably. <laughs> with, that, with that said, so again, just great show. There are a few weak episodes, but all good shows have some weak episodes here and there. Even, our, even my favorite shows. 
I think um, right, it, it's a testament to say to to you know Troll Hunter season one that a majority of it still feels very strong, and it is hard to pick out one episode that stands out above the rest as yeah, this is you know bad. Like this is this just does not work. This is the weakest episode out of the bunch. Like it's it's yeah. a testament to the show that it's hard to do that. I would say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and. Again, it only gets better from here, if you ask me. So when Agreed. this season, when this season is your low point, you know the show is in a good state. And I mean, and, and, and like you know, again, starting season being your low point, yeah, absolutely agreed. Like you're in for a good ride if you know the opening season, which is designed inherently from the get go to be, you know, you're you know, like, hey, let's ease you into things, let's familiarize you with the world and the characters and kind of some of the stuff you're going to need to know, and then let's get heavy into it in the next season if that season that has to do that anyways is your weakest season you're in for a good ride you're in for you know a good story and some great characters mm -hmm. so overall go watch troll hunter season one if you haven't already by some chance and join us mm -hmm. next time when we're back for troll hunter season two Yep, next time is Troll Hunter Season 2. But until that point, what do you think about Season 1? Um, you can tell us all about it in the, in the comment section below on our Twitter, which is Bellcast Team, with a, no, Bellcast with a capital B, capital C, and our Tumblr, which is Bellcast Team. So, until next time, I wanted to reference the, the line, but I actually forgot it for a second. So, hold on. <laughs> oh. <laughs> For, for the honor, for the honor of Merlin, daylight is yours to command. I should have just cut you. I should have just cut you off. I should have just cut you off. I you should have just cut you off. Uh, well, that said, that's everything for this episode of the Outcast. We hope you enjoyed. Take care. See you in season two. I was Wolf. Bye bye. <laughs>